What's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC, a Wednesday edition. It's an overreaction Wednesday. We're going to bring in our buddy Chris Marler from the College Football Uncensored podcast. We're going to overreact to what we saw in week one of the SEC. We'll also start to turn the page and look at week two and some of the big matchups we have. We get some SEC versus SEC games as well as some very sexy non-conference matchups. We'll talk about it all with Marler coming up right now. Locked On SEC starts right now. You are Locked On SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what is happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. We'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidate you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. All right, we got to jump into it. we got plenty to discuss Let's bring in our buddy Chris Marler from the College Football Uncensored podcast, and he joins us now. Marler, welcome in, man. How are you? I'm good. First off, that uh, that intro music was bomb. That was good. That was real good. <laughs> also, no, I didn't know the bourbon the bourbon uh, choices you're working with behind you. This is impressive. Oh yeah. Well, you know, when your wife went to Kentucky, you gotta, you know, she loads you up with some some decent. I mean, Buffalo Trace is what we drink during the game. Some Basil Hayden, some Elijah Craig, some Eagle Rare. Yeah, yeah. love that. Yeah, so, my girlfriend went to Georgia, so all I get loaded up with is guff and just you know, and, and grief. Especially about opening round, opening week win against uh, against Oregon. Man, that was. Hey, tough. if you need to, if you need to match a black top with a red skirt, I bet she has got you covered. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, plenty to overreact to. So let's jump into it. We're gonna call this section our overreactions to week one. Marler, first up, Alabama beat Utah State 55 nothing, but the defense had zero sacks. What's wrong with Alabama's defense? <laughs> Did it hit zero sacks? You know, I, I posted something yesterday. My overreaction was this. Utah State had 23 yards. They gained 23 yards in the first play, and then they only gained two plays over 10 yards the rest of the game, 56 to the next 58 uh, overall plays, then for 10 yards or less. And then I remember tweeting that out, and I was like, that's impressive. And then I was like reading it. I was like, is that impressive? I don't know. Um, yeah, the defense sucks, man. I, I don't know. I don't tell you that that offense, that's a team that barely beat UConn week before. You got to think they're going to go to Austin and get their, their blank kicked in. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> More college football SEC week one overreaction. Uh, Georgia's defense has reloaded. They're not rebuilding Marler. They held Oregon to just three points. Is this defense better than last year's Georgia defense? Oh, it's, I t- well, so, okay. First off, all jokes aside, because I don't know how serious we're supposed to be on this, but um, it's an overreaction they, either way. Yeah, no, the, I said this in the offseason. I fully believe it. Th- this Georgia team is potentially more is better than the other team or the team from a year ago. God, I stumbled through that sentence. This Georgia team is better than the team they had a year ago, strictly because not because the defense. The defense they're going to still put up their numbers. Like we saw, I mean, we saw Malachi Starks, that five five star freshman. That's an absurd interception he made uh, against Bo Nix in the first quarter. But the way that offense is going to be able to run, they they have the potential to be more dominant this year than they were a year ago. Yeah, it was funny. Malachi Starks, he makes that play. And I'm like, let me look this kid up. What was he? Oh, the number one athlete. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's uh... yeah, five star never went to a single camp. <laughs> just just played just played high school football and they were like, Yeah, I'm you're like, good. I'm like expected to see like, oh, he was like a four star. No, number one athlete, like top yeah. athlete in last yeah. year's recruiting class. Uh, Brian Kelly loses a close game to Florida State and is 0-1 as the head coach at LSU. Was the Brian Kelly hire a mistake, Marler? No, and I hate everything about this loss because it was like, Keyshawn Booty has put up – he took off all of his LSU stuff off his off – his, that's where we get our news from now is so defeating. Um, but Keyshawn Booty and, then, and the other kid uh, – who was – what the hell was his name? Malik Neighbors who fumbled the punt, you know – like it was not a mistake higher. And here's the thing too, like guys, it's the second week of the season. Technically it's, it's week one. I know we're going into week. Like we don't know if Florida state's bad. Stop judging teams based off the fact that, you know, they, they lost to so-and-so a couple of years ago. Like, like this Florida state team, it's a, it's a program that has been traditionally very, very good over this, over like the, you know, 30,000 feet up and looking at the, 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 the broad scope there. I, Brian Kelly's fine. They're, they're fine. They're still going to beat Auburn. 
Another week one overreaction, Marler at Auburn. T.J. Finley threw two interceptions. Robbie Ashford ran for 68 yards and looks like the second coming of Johnny Manziel. Should Robbie Ashford be the starter? You see that pancake block, brother? You see that pancake block he hit for Tank? My God, Auburn fans just losing their mind over stuff like that. That was hilarious. Um, I don't know. I, I'm very uncomfortable with all Robbie Ashford talk because his mom joins all the Facebook or Twitter spaces at night, and it's just like, like, <laughs> do we have to be nice or do we like? What do we say here? He, um, you know, I, I think there are a lot of people that going into this season kind of assumed that he should have been the starter or Calzada or, or anyone but Finley. Um, I, I don't know if he should be the starter or not. I think outside of outside of when the, there being cops involved, I haven't seen TJ Finley evade a lot of pass rush or rush on him uh, over the last several years. He's not he's not very mobile. He went on a moped, brother. By the way, it must be uh must be something about Pac-12 moms because Jaden Daniels' mom, she was in some Twitter spaces too defending. So why? Maybe we should start. Maybe that should be a spinoff podcast, Pac-12 moms, and uh, just talk after dark. <laughs> BYU moms after dark. All right, our last week one overreaction. Anthony Richardson is Cam Newton 2.0, just as big of a big passing arm. Incredible mobility. Is Florida going to roll Kentucky on Saturday night? Is that an overreaction or is that is that a fair comp? Because here's I said this in the offseason. And listen, I the offseason is so long. It's so much room for bad takes. I said this during the offseason and people thought I was like an idiot. Because as soon as I said that, that name, people were like, oh, he thinks he's Cam Newton. Um, I like, he, Here's the thing. Anthony Richardson is not 6'6 and he's not 250 and doesn't run a 4'4 or actually he does. But like he's not 6'6, 250 and have like the wrong rocket arm that Cam has maybe. I don't know. What I will say is that that team will go as far as he can take them. Uh, and you saw it this weekend. That kid has the opportunity to be a very, very special player. And I think there's several games on that on that schedule that you're going to you're going to circle and he's going to go out there and win for you just because of athletic ability. I, and I will say this too. I don't even know what, what Florida has fully on offense yet, but I guarantee you he has a better supporting cast than Cam had. So watch out. All right. Last one of our overreaction, uh, Texas A&M defensive line looks bigger, looks stronger. A lot of five-star talent there. They shut out Sam Houston state 31, nothing. Does Texas A&M uh, go all year without giving up a point? <laughs> That game's still going, right? <laughs> like, it's, it's still in a rain delay. A lightning delay yeah. For, there was lightning 50 miles away. We got to stop everything. I, I will say this. Here's my only response. I tweeted it out the other day. Jimbo Fisher, the QB, the QB whisperer, it might be, bro, because, my God, they, they look mundane at best at, at quarterback. Hey, I could do, here's what I could do, though. Like, if you just watched the highlights of that game and you saw the deep passes, you'd go, my God, Hades King's awesome. But yeah. if you watch the full game, he made some really bad passes. And also, very mixed bag there. All right, that is uh, our week one overreaction uh, as we get this thing started. We're talking with Chris Marler of the College Football Uncensored Podcast. Coming up next, we're going to dive into the actual games, take a very early look. This is a Wednesday, Wednesday okay. show, taking an early look at the games happening this weekend. We'll do that with Chris Marler in just a second. But first, I want to remind you guys about our friends over at – LinkedIn jobs. We've been telling you about them. It is the place to go. If you need to post a job, you can do it in minutes on LinkedIn jobs. You can reach the net, uh, your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. You can add your job and the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. So your network can help you find the right people to hire simple tools, screening questions, make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience. So you can quickly prioritize who you would like to hire and interview LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Do you know, every week about 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. It's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Going along here, locked on SEC, and we're talking with our good buddy Chris Marler of the College Football Uncensored podcast. He's going to join us every week to. Uh, talk all things SEC and Marler as we uh, cl start to close the book on week one and turn that proverbial page here on Ump Day and look ahead to uh, week two. Man, we've got some big matchups and let's start with the headliner of the non-conference games. It's number one Alabama at the Texas Longhorns. College game day is coming to Austin. Steve Sarkeesian versus Nick Saban. I'm pretty sure Matthew McConaughey is going to be there somewhere. I'll be the guest picker as he always is. But Bet Online has Bama still 
around a three touchdown favorite. Yeah. I'm looking at it, look at it this way, Marler. Quinn Ewers, B. John Robinson, Xavier Worthy. Are we not giving Texas enough credit in this? No, one? we're not. I've been saying this since the summer. Now, this is a this is a offense that has five stars everywhere. If you look at Steve Sarkeesian's record, for whatever reason, he's like blacklisted Lane Kiffin. Okay, Lane Kiffin was an a hole for years. Every I haven't cussed one time on this on this episode. Thank you very much. Um, but he's he was like an a hole for years and years, and everyone hated him. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he can't do anything wrong. Then you end up having a guy like Quinn. Yours is a great picture, by the way. Um, you end up having a guy like like Steve Sarkeesian. He has this whole issue when he's at USC and he's like, you know, he's drunk in public. And then he starts doing a whole rehab tour where it's like, you know, he goes to Bama as the OC. He's in the, with the Falcons. This guy gets hated on no matter what. Like he's, he's, I've said this year in, year out. He is one of the top two offensive minds in all of college football, maybe all of football in general. And all this guy does is put up really good offenses and really good points. And now he has talent around him. You think about like the, the, the negatives you heard about him when he was at Bama. Oh, he's only, he's only good because, He's got a really good quarterback. He's only good because he's got a really good receivers. Or he's only good because he's got a really good running back. Well, guess what, guys? He's got all of that at Texas. Now, the offensive line, I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. But he's got the number one rated quarterback in the history of recruiting with Quinn Ewers ahead of anyone else, right? Um, he's percent of his production coming back from, from the, the running back position a year ago, including a Heisman. I don't even say a dark horse because B. John Robinson is really, really good. And then he's got five stars at receiver now. So I, I think that – when you look at the talent he's been able to bring in, they were very vanilla a week ago. It's at Texas. It's going to be hot as hell. They're not letting the million-dollar band travel, which you know that's the key to victory for Bama in a lot of games is the band being there. Um, I mean, I will say this whole hospitality thing that Texas is fumbling the bag on is a little bit surprising. And I know you went out to the LSU-Texas game a couple of years ago, and you were giving me kind of a heads up of like what was going on over there. You know that they they tried they tried to refuse a sweet for Miss Terry. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think uh, this is an early preview. I, I know the the Longhorn faithful are saying, you know, this is an early preview of what it's going to be like SEC life. Look, maybe they this team isn't fully on par, ready to go with Bama yet, but right. the the the, sm- the trash talk and all that is, is starting to get going already. So. Um, Look, I'm kind of with you that I think Texas is better than we're giving them credit for. Mm-hmm. But Alabama looks so good in week one. The the dyna- yeah. added dynamic of uh, of the running ability of Bryce Young. If he's going to run and throw at a Heisman elite level, I mean, the offense should be unstoppable. Right. But, man, I got to think the Bama defense is licking their chops after saying, you know, Will Anderson for the Heisman, he doesn't get a sack in week one. He's going to need like six this week to make up for lost time. Uh, yeah, I'm not worried about that defense. I'm not worried about Chris Brown. I mean, Chris, we, we, there's – there's guys in that defense that we're not even talking about, like Chris Braswell, who's also kind of caught the edge behind Dallas Turner. They are going to be fine. And that defense, that defense was really, really good a week ago. Let's uh, get into another big one. 3.30 Eastern on ABC. It's number 24, Tennessee at number 17, Pitt. The Vols mm-hmm. around a six-and-a-half-point road favorite as the artist formerly known as Heinz Field uh, hosts uh, the Tennessee Volunteers. I mean, look, I like the Vols. I love Hendon Hooker, but a defense, it still feels a little – yeah. yeah, and I Shady. wonder if they get, yeah if they get into a shout out a shootout on the road at Pitt, and uh, Keaton Slovis looked pretty good last week. I say what? Um, yeah, he did. He did. He looked really good. I think that that Pitt. That, I remember seeing a stat about this like ten years ago, and it stuck with my head forever. And I've, I, you've heard me say it before, but it's something like seventy two percent of of teams that are favored by five and a half don't don't cover. I don't have a context for you on that. I don't have an update for you on that. I don't have any, like, I don't have the numbers behind it, but it's stuck in my head forever. Five and a half is a road favorite for Tennessee off a team that was a New Year's Six team a year ago. I'll, I will love the points on that. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's going to be a fun one. Um, again, I, I just have no, I like, I, I like Tennessee, but man, it, it's, it, it, that game was an awesome one last year. And now they have yeah. to go on the road. I just, I wonder if the Vols have the uh, the defense to get stops when I, they truly need it. I will say this, Pitt having to get up emotionally two weeks in a row, because that last week, you know, they opened up against West Virginia. That's a bitter, bitter rivalry. They hate each other. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they look like two weeks in a row with that. We get a sneaky good one at 11 a.m. Central on ESPN2. It's 1-0 Mizzou at 1-0 Kansas State. The Wildcats are around a touchdown favorite. I've seen it as high as eight. 
is this a spot maybe to buy in on Brady Cook and Mizzou? I, man, I really like Luther Burden in League One. League One. It was a small sample size, but they yeah. got him a receiving touchdown. They got him a rushing touchdown. I feel like that's a guy you just got to center your offense around. But yeah, look, everybody's buying into Kansas State. Is this one Mizzou can hang around in? How many yards did Luther Burden have? It wasn't many. It was like and <laughs> <Like 30. 17 laughs> yards receiving, and like fifteen yards rushing. It wasn't yeah. much, but he did find um, it twice. He did. He did. I, I will tell you that's more important too. So um, I'll take Kansas state just because I don't think anybody goes to Kansas state uh, and comes out on skates, unless you are a geriatric coach that wants to stay there for roughly 10 to 78 years, like Bill Snyder did. So um, I think that when you talk about like, you talk about like this, I'm not, I'm not going to bet on this game at all. Cause this is, that'd be absurd with Mizzou right now with where they are. Um, but I, I think that it should be sneaky. I tell you, a sneaky good game. I don't know if we're going to get to it, but I have State and A and M. Yeah, I didn't even have that one on my list. But yeah, oh, they got into a shootout with North Carolina a week ago. I, and, and you look at Chase Bryce's numbers. The kid from App State, he was twenty five of twenty six for like seventeen hundred and thirty eight yards. Um, it was I mean, like something like that. It was something close. Uh, they are their team. I think that like. They will test that young secondary uh, at, at A&M. They're going to like in that young defense, especially without Elko. Um, I wonder what that looks like. I think that'll be a fun game. Because here's the thing, too. A&M, A&M hasn't had to play with expectations at any point. They didn't have them last year. They didn't have them in 2020. They didn't really have them in 2019 because there's already a built-in caveat of like, well, you know, if they don't, if they don't win at all, or if, you know, if they don't win 10 games, like they played five, t- five top 10 teams, four in the top five. Like, who cares? Now you're in a situation where like you do have expectations. Jimbo has ex- expectations, and then you got Miami coming in town next week. So I wonder what that offense looks like, uh, or that defense looks like against against App State. We're continuing our conversation with Chris Marler from the College Football Uncensored podcast. And Marler, we do have some SEC matchups this weekend. Let's start with the big one: number twenty Kentucky at number twelve Florida. The Gators with that impressive Week One win over Utah. I was a little disappointed watching Kentucky. Their offensive line did not play well. Will Levis was shocking. I mean, he had pressure in his face much of that game. They settled down the second half. They got uh, Tavion Robinson involved and got him the ball a lot. But Florida right around a five-point favorite. This could, though, feel like – we'd never want to overreact, like like we said earlier, right, Marlo, to week one. Right. You can't overreact to Florida, what beat Utah, so now they're going to run the table. This is still a very evenly matched game. It's, it is Anthony Richardson – versus Kentucky. And here's the thing. You brought the first thing you brought up was, well, you know, I was disappointed because their offensive line didn't look that great. Well, their offensive line lost three NFL offensive linemen. Like that's why that offensive line didn't look very good because they lost three NFL offensive linemen. Um, you know, I, I think this will be, this will be interesting, but here, here's the thing that I, I think that we're going to see a lot of this year. Um, and that is this will Levis. He's going to have opportunities to eat in some of these games. Like you talk about games like, uh, I don't know, against Louisville last year, where he has like six touchdowns, and uh, even games against like Tennessee, where you, you know they have this porous defense. Games like this, where you're, I mean, like what Will Levis doesn't understand this year in year two, and, and and I know that a lot of people, I work with some of them that have been really high on Will Levis, right? Because he eats bananas with the peels on it. He's quirky and he puts mayonnaise in his coffee. Well, guys, that's gross, guys. That's just that's gross. That's, that has nothing to do with him being a good quarterback. You're going to have to put games on this kid's shoulders a lot this year because of what you lost a year ago. I don't trust Will Levis, okay? Like, I haven't dated him, but I trust him less than an ex. And I, I trust – and I say that because of the fact that it's like you, you, you're you a guy that goes in – first off, you eat bananas and appeals on. How do I trust you? Second off, you're a guy that goes into these games, and we saw it a year ago. You have 13 interceptions. And sure, maybe he grows from year one to year two – that offense didn't look good against Miami of Ohio last week, who's not very good. I don't care if they're missing Chris Rodriguez. You should be able to go in there and have if you have a if you have a first round quarterback, if you have if you have what some are projecting to be a top 10 quarterback in the draft, you don't struggle against Miami of Ohio. And they did. And I think it gets worse this week. Yeah. And look, uh, if, let me do a little bit on the Kentucky side. They did put the game away in the second half. It wasn't even close. They won 37-13. And if you just look at the box score, Will Levis threw for 300 yards and three touchdowns with one INT. Uh, the box right. score looks looks good. It's just if you watch the game, you saw, oh my God! Every time he's got the you know the ball pressure in its face, and he's got to get rid right. of it. That said, you lose Wandale Robinson, you get Tavion Robinson. This guy picks mm-hmm. up right where Wandale leaves off. So 
Uh, six catches, 136 yards. That's better. He topped Wandale's debut a year ago for setting the yeah. uh, debut record for a Kentucky wide receiver. So that was really good. But, uh, yeah, early early feel on this one. I'm feeling like that swamp is going to be rocking in the game. Yeah. We'll you about the humidity, brother? Hey, brother, you ain't played in heat like this, Utah. Welcome. <laughs> uh, South Carolina is at number 16, Arkansas, an 11 a.m. Central game on ESPN. Arkansas about a – or over a touchdown favorite. I watched South Carolina against Georgia State. Gross. Again, just like Kentucky, offensive line, very disappointing. Yeah. Spencer Rattler constantly had pressure in his face. Again, finally settled down the second half, and they were able to pull away. Any chance Rattler and Shane Beamer and company give the Razorbacks some issues? I don't. I'm in. A, I'm having a moment with myself right now where I'm. 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 I'm thinking maybe I'm not as bad at this job as I thought I was because, like everything you're saying are things that I said this summer. Like, yeah, it, it's awesome that South Carolina is going to bring in Spencer Rattler and they're bringing all this other talent at, at at tight end or whatever. But think about how much less talent around him Spencer Rattler is going to have in Columbia versus the, what he had in Norman. Right. Um, the offensive line last year for South Carolina was awful. Uh, I'm not saying that Arkansas's front seven is supposedly going to be great. They looked pretty good on Saturday uh, at several times. But, like, this is Georgia State. I mean, look look at this. This is Bo Nix's kid out here, number 40, playing linebacker. Look at, look at the size of this kid's head. <laughs> this guy's a starting linebacker. This guy's built like Rick Moranis from Little Giants, and he's out here playing linebacker against Spencer Rattler. What the hell is happening right now? <laughs> I guess, sorry. I digress badly. If you're <laughs> listening to the uh, podcast version, you definitely want to go watch the video version of this. On YouTube he had a space ball helmet on. I mean, good Lord. Um, no, so, I, so the point is, this South Carolina team, You, we all want the, this – who this game should be played to a tie 69 to 69 because everybody in the country is pulling for both of these teams. Nobody wants to see him lose. Like we love Sam Pibben, that whole oh, man, I love me a good old cold beer. I'm like, we, who doesn't love that? Right. Like we love Shane Beamer who drinks, he still drinks like high C fruit punch um, out of the juice box. Cause he's 12. But like, we love both of these guys. South Carolina is not where they, everyone thinks they're going to be. They overachieved last year. And it's it showed early in week one, and I'm I'm part of that is that me I'm very very frustrated because my lock of the week was them covering seven points in the first half and didn't even come close. Let's get to another one that could be sneaky uh, sneaky good. It's two and zero Vandy hosting number twenty three Wake Forest. Look, a year ago we wouldn't have talked at Vandy no. football at all, but man, Mike Wright is making Vandy fun again. Make Vandy so fun. fun. Again. Make, make the hats. Uh, Sam Hartman coming back for Wake Forest. Vandy almost a two touchdown underdog at home. Oh, that Probably. line jumped, huh? Talk me out of it. Talk me out of Vandy plus the points. I mean, with Hartman back, that line jumped like seven points. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm taking Wake, to be honest. I hate that. But, I mean, like they, they couldn't cover against Elon. Yeah. Yeah. Elon is a is I mean, I don't even know what that they this kid from Elon is still a better looking athlete than the kid from Georgia State. Also, look at Mike Wright's eyes. Like he is, he is, he knows that the, that the winning streak is coming to an end um, for sure. We have this ought to be a segment. It's just showing these pictures every week. Those pictures from a week ago. Well, we don't yeah. have the rights to show, you know, uh, video. Yeah. Well, I have to show stills, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I get two more for you before we get out of here. Um, Ole Miss gets Central Arkansas. The, the, the game is re relevant, but they're switching quarterbacks. This is scripted from Lane Kiffin. They're going to switch to Luke Altmyer, give him a shot mm -hmm. to start. Here's, I mean, like, Jackson Dart was not very impressive in week one. No. What happens if Altmyer goes out there and crushes Central Arkansas? Like, throws for 300 yards and three Good. touchdowns. He's the quarterback. I mean, is that, so that's the decision? Yeah. I mean, like, I, like – it, 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 Ole Miss has a has a very good way of setting. It. Ole Miss is like Missouri in a, in, a, in a way, except that they're a fun school that people respect. Um, Ole Miss has a the ability to where they're like, we're going to play our first four games against nobodies, and then we're going to get the SEC schedule. So they have this September where they can kind of play around and figure out what they're going to do. But you've already had one of those games. I mean, like you. I mean, think about how like 28, 28 to ten against a Troy team that that lost like seven of their last nine last year. Like that's not a Troy team of the past that beat LSU. I hate to say that, but like that's not that was not a very good football team they played. And they looked pretty mediocre against them, and they didn't even pull away in the second half. So uh, yeah, let all my go out there and find someone that's going to separate themselves. 
Uh, the other one, we kind of hinted on it, at it earlier in the overreaction, but Auburn is hosting San Jose State. They got a big game against Penn State coming up. Yeah. TJ Finley, I mean, look, he's going to start, but Robbie Ashford, I mean, he showed off his running ability. He made some mm-hmm. nice throws. Like, I'll pose it this way. Like, is this just a two-quarterback system the rest of the year in your mind? No, no, they can't do that. Like, like Harson, the, the quickest way Harson does get fired is, is showing any sort of indecision. Um, look at those sad, sad eyes. Good <laughs> Lord. I hope you guys are – I mean, I – like that looks like a like a a, a basset hound on his thirteenth year. Like, that is a tough <laughs> tough look. Um, but you, you look <laughs> you look at Robbie Ashford. I think his upside is, is way higher than Finley's. I think that's how you 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 kind of. I mean, also that muscle that 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 delt muscle is like pretty impressive too. I I think you you kind of pin your hopes to that kid over TJ Finley for sure. Um, it's San Jose team. It's not like. Like I've I've heard from some people that's like I'm fully preparing myself to lose against the San Jose State team, you know they barely beat Portland State in week one, right or week zero, whatever it would be. I think Auburn wins. You need to have answers going into the Penn State game. You need to have answers because then you're facing a Sean Clifford team uh, from and James Franklin, where you know they had to battle adversity against Purdue. They had law. They were they had to come from behind. Their quarterback had diarrhea. They had a whole bunch of stuff going on. They you hopefully they don't have to deal with it again. My God. I mean, you better find some answers going into that. That was uh, those are your picks, your early pick. Uh, looking ahead to uh, the week two of the SEC with our buddy Chris Marler. Before we get out of here, I do want to say a quick ode to uh, Guy Morris, the former Kentucky head coach who passed away uh, oh. this week. He was diagnosed years ago with uh, with Alzheimer's. But yeah. I will say there was no more epic Gatorade bath for a team before they won they went on to lose the game that's literally what i'll remember from guy morris it was the 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 kentucky 2010 yeah the the bluegrass miracle in kentucky yeah nick saban and lsu win on the a hail mary play after guy morris has already been doused with the gatorade and uh more epic LSU. one too and i don't want to take away from him but it was when lsu lost to a&m and coach o had to coach five more overtimes that with the sticky gatorade on himself yeah that that one sucked um kick six <laughs> They didn't, they didn't pour Gatorade on. Stage. Okay, why are we doing this? We 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 ended the show with diarrhea and basset hound cheeks, so we're good. <laughs> he is Chris Marler. Follow him on Twitter at Vern Funquist. Check out his uh, podcast, uh, doing it a couple days a week, uh, the College Football Uncensored podcast. He's going to be joining us every week right here on Locked on SEC, talking all things SEC football. Marler, thanks for the time, man. Of course, man. I appreciate it. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Locked on SEC. Remember to subscribe. And check us out wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen. Check out all our other great podcasts. Locked on Bulldogs, Locked on Razorbacks, Locked on whatever SEC school you're looking for. Chances are we got you covered. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.